It is 6.05, so I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, with the community meeting this evening. Uh, let me share my screen here with everyone. All right, here we go. So, first of all, thank you to everyone for coming out this evening uh, to the community meeting. And uh, I, uh, sorry, sorry, y'all, hold on here. Here we go. Uh, thanks, it, thank you to everyone for coming out this evening to the community meeting. Uh, we're going to be talking tonight about the Bordeaux, Whites Creek, Haynes, Trinity, and Park Union Hill Community Plan Amendments. And so tonight we will have uh, who is joining us, Council Member Toombs, uh, Andrea Barber from the Community Plans uh, Department, uh, Nina McCaig from the Community, Community Plans Department, and myself, Corey Clark, who will be presenting tonight. And I'm also from the Community Plans Com uh, uh, Department. And uh, Council Member Toombs, uh, would you like to say a couple words before we begin? Sure. Um, so <clears throat> the two neighborhoods that are on the agenda for this evening, my um, reasoning behind asking for a, a change to the land use policy to uh, neighborhood maintenance is basically to it, it goes along with the preserving and, and protecting established neighborhoods and not um, getting in front of the density in, in certain parts of the district. And these are two areas where I've heard feedback from residents that they don't want a lot of density. Um, and it really, you know, how development has gone, particularly off of Baptist World Center Drive has, has I think has been more intense than was intended um, years ago when the Nashville Next Plan was done. And so this is an attempt to get ahead of it and reduce the density in certain parts of the district. And so uh, with that, be thank you, Council Member Toom. So move right along here. Uh, so our agenda for tonight, uh, we're gonna be talking about the purpose of this meeting, uh, kind of some background information. We're gonna talk about policy and zoning. Uh, we're going to talk about the requested community character policy and afterwards, after the presentation, uh, the floor is going to be open up for questions and further discussion about what was being talked about. And so kind of having to lay things out here is kind of first couple of slides. We're going to be talking about uh, Baptist World Center Drive and uh, this is uh, you can see from the map right here. The kind of location where it is. Uh, we're going to be looking at the properties north of Baptist World Center and uh, that are going to be west of Brick Church Pike. And if you want to follow along here, we're just going to describe the proposed changes, uh, explain the process, gather feedback, and make recommendations. When it's all said and done, I'll be make re making recommendations to the Metro Planning Commission. And so this is just an aerial view right here of uh, the plan amendment area. So kind of orient you to where uh, we're talking about here. If you look to the uh, to the east, you'll see Brick Church Pike, Interstate 65. Uh, if you're going back to the west, you'll see Baptist World Center and the Cumberland River and across there Metro Center. Uh, just like I said, kind of orients you to the area that I'm talking about tonight. And so again, we're having two plan amendments. So the second one we're going to be talking about is uh, for properties along Ewing Drive, which is located east of Brick Church Pike and uh, west of Richmond Hill Drive, as you can see from the uh, map right here. And again, self-explanatory. Going to be doing talk about the same things as uh, describing proposed changes, explaining the process, gathering feedback, and making recommendations to the Metro Planning Commission. And so this is the area right here. Uh, again, you can see the red outline area is the 
plan amendment area that we're talking about that we're discussing tonight and uh, just to orient yourself. Uh, I 65 over here to the east going back to the left or to the west. You see brick church Pike and you see I 24. And you see uh, you and drive here and you see the properties that are. Uh, within the plan amendment area. And again, so you can kind of orient yourself to the area and know what we're going to be talking about. And so just kind of give a little background on community planning here in Nashville. Uh, the, the Metro plan department, uh, we use community plans as a means of applying the Nashville next plan, which is the county, the county wide long range plan. Excuse me. And within this plan are 14 community plans prepared by the plan department staff in cooperation with residents, business owners, property owners, uh, and development oppression, development professionals. These community plans, uh, we use them to guide where development and preservation should occur in each community within Davidson County. And so in order to implement the vision of each of those 14 community plans, we use what's called the community character manual, which contains land use policies that address the form and the character of development. And it should be noted that every property in Nashville and Davidson County has a land use policy attached to it. And each of those land use policies is further defined in the community character manual. And these policies are the standard by which we, uh, by which future zone change requests are measured. Oh, excuse me. And so first up, uh, we're looking at the Bordeaux, Whites Creek, Haynes Trinity. Uh, community plan. Uh, this is a map. You'll see it just kind of showing you like the where this community plan is located in relation to Davidson County. It's going to be uh, in the northwestern section of Davidson County, and uh, it is approximately 70 square miles, which is equates like 13 percent of the land area in Davidson County for this community plan. And so right here, what you're looking at, uh, this is the transect categories and we use transects to guide. We use them as a guide for various development patterns of Nashville and Davidson County. And so you're looking at T4 is where the uh, plan amendment is located. And the circle over here is kind of the, the area where uh, this uh, plan amendment is located in relation to like the, uh, the community plan. And also, let me back up here and just kind of highlight something here. So with transects, T1 is going to be like, oh, sorry here. So T1, that's going to be like the natural transect, which is predominantly undisturbed and least developed, all the way down to T6, which is uh, like your central business district or downtown. And right here where we are, T4, that's going to be like your historic entering neighborhoods as well as some new neighborhoods with the intent of being developed in a more urban fashion. And so this right here is our community character policy map and the legend you see off to the right. Uh, these are the different community character policies. And again, the red circle is where the plan amendment site is located. And if you look to the map, you'll see these are the different uh, community character or land use policies that have been applied to uh, the uh, Bordeaux community plan. And again, each property within this community plan has a community character policy attached to it. And now we're going to switch gears and we'll talk about the Park Hill Union Hill, Parkwood Union Hill community plan. Uh, this right here, uh, this community plan is located in the northern part of Davidson County. Uh, it's bordered by uh, Robertson County to the north. Uh, you have Interstate 65, Goodlessville, and Sumner County forms a border to the east. Uh, Interstate uh, 24, or the junction of Interstate 24 and 65 form border to the south. And to the west, uh, you have Interstate 24, uh, which also forms a border over here. So you can see how uh, you see this community plan in, uh, in uh, 
in regards to the rest of uh, Davidson County. And again, just talking about the transect as well, uh, what I discussed earlier. Down here at the bottom where the circle, red circle is, that is where the uh, community plan amendment area is. And you kind of see where it's located in relation to uh, the rest of the community plan. And it is in the T3 transect, which is uh, a transect that's designed to be a bridge between the least dense natural and rural environments to the more dense urban environments. So as you can see, uh, you start in T1, T2, T3, and you keep transitioning to T4, which we discussed in the previous slide, uh, T5 and T6. So you're kind of working your way up. And again, this is just a community character policy map right here again with the circle down here at the bottom. That's where the, the community plan amendment area is located at. And you can see the different uh, land use policies that have been applied to uh, the uh, Parkwood Union Hill community plan. And so why are policies important? Uh, policies, they're important because uh, they they provide guidance that rezoning requests are measured against. And if a zoning request is supported by existing policy, there's a higher likelihood that the Metro Planning Commission will recommend approval. Uh, if a request is not supported by the existing policy, the Metro Commission is unlikely to recommend approval. So an applicant, so a person may apply to change a policy that does support the zone request and this sorry uh sorry about that y'all so what's the difference uh you can see right here but basically land use policy is like a vision for the area and zoning is more or less the the law that we uh we have to follow and uh zoning should be no zoning is influenced by the policies in the community plans and with all that being said, uh, uh, kind of was a brief overview right there, but there's no zone change taking place with any one of these community plans here. There's no zone change taking place. There's just only policy being changed. So this right here is a policy map, and this is for the uh, Baptist, Baptist World Center Drive uh, community plan amendment. And so what's being asked? So the existing policy is urban mixed use policy, mixed use neighborhood policy. And you can read right along. The intent is to maintain, enhance, and create urban mixed use neighborhoods with a diverse mix of moderate to high density commercial, residential, office, and light uses. A uh, couple characteristics of this uh, land use policy, moderate to high density residential development, mixed use, commercial, light, industrial, institutional uses. And these policies are applicable to areas that are zoned residential, commercial, and light industrial, where the primary land use is residential, uh, excuse me, commercial, or that are envisioned to become primarily mixed use with residential and commercial as secondary uh, uses, as ancillary uses. And so the requested policy is urban neighborhood maintenance. And the intent of this policy is to maintain urban neighborhoods as characterized by their moderate to high density residential development pattern, building form and types, setbacks, and building rhythm along the street. And this this policy is applied in areas or situations where there's an express interest in maintaining the predominant existing developed condition and is believed and that condition is believed to be stable and sustainable over a period of time. And so that was uh, the Baptist World Center Drive uh, Community Plan Amendment. Now we're going to switch gears, going to talk to you about you ain't drive uh, plan amendment. And this is the policy map again. The red outline areas is the uh, where the plan amendment will be taking place 
or the properties that would be affected by the plan amendment. And so the existing policy that's in place now is the suburban neighborhood evolving policy. And this policy's intent is to create and enhance suburban neighborhoods that have the best qualities of classic suburban neighborhoods, which are a greater housing choice, improved connectivity, uh, and more creative, innovative, and environmentally sensitive development techniques. And this is applicable, this policy is applicable to areas where there's uh, you have an express interest in the evolving development pattern of the area to again to promote uh, greater housing choice connectivity so forth and so on. And so the requested policy here is suburban neighborhood maintenance, and this is basically the intent is to maintain the general character of suburban neighborhoods as characterized by their development pattern building form, land use, and associated public realm. And so this is kind of like uh, going back to our previous uh, slide, our previous plan amendment where we were talking about uh, suburban, I'm sorry, urban uh, neighborhood maintenance is basically going to be the same except this, this right here is trying to maintain the predominant uh, existing development condition for suburban instead of urban. So uh, pretty much they're both the same. They're just one is urban, the other one is suburban, if you kind of want to differentiate between the two. And I know that was kind of brief and maybe to the point, but uh, I will uh, open the floor for anyone that has any questions. And if you do have questions, uh, you have to raise your hand and uh, Sade, our ITS uh, staff member who's assisting us this evening, she will uh, unmute you and you'll be able to ask your questions. Janice Bill, you're now unmuted. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, good evening. Thank you. My name is Janice Bell, um, and I reside on Ewing Drive. So I have a question about the Parkwood and the Union Hill um, amendment plan. So looking at the map, I see the, where the line is drawn. It's drawn um, around there's, there's, there's houses or residential uh, lots, the way it's driven, it leaves those those particular houses that are on dead end on Richmond Hill. It leaves those out. Can you speak to that? Why it was why the line line was drawn the way it was? I'm speaking of um, the Ewing Drive one. Okay, let me bring that map back up right quick. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen here. One second. Okay, can you see the uh can you see the map now? I can. Okay, so you're asking about uh Rich the Richmond Hill, that little block, that little yellow block of about that right there, about maybe seven or eight lots. Why that particular section? Because it's bordered by the interstate and the, the you know overpass of the interstate. It's just a little cluster that sits there, but it's a dead end on Richmond Hill. So I was just curious as to why that was kind of uh, left out. Yes, ma'am. Because those properties right there are already uh, suburban neighborhood maintenance, and so the properties that are in the red, they would essentially become that yellow. They would. Uh, be neighborhood maintenance as well. So that's why they were excluded. Okay, so those in the red are currently not so not in that not, not in the proposed uh policy, correct? Correct. Yes, ma'am. The ones in the red are going to be suburban neighborhood evolving. Okay. All right. 
right. Well, that was that was the question I had about why they were excluded. So I do want to say thank you for the call and thank you for the information. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, and I also should note, uh, I just caught this. If you guys are looking at the map, you see the green areas there. That is conservation. That will not be changed. That will remain in place. Uh, just want to make that distinction right there. So I apologize for not highlighting that earlier. In the presentation. Ed Branding also had his hand up. Okay. Um, I, I'm good. Don't worry about me. But thank you. Yes, sir. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. There are no other hands raised at this time, Corey. Okay. Stop sharing here. All right. Well, there are no other hands raised, so I get one is content with what was presented tonight. Uh, this will be uh, this meeting is being recorded, so it'll be uploaded to YouTube uh, for you to go back and uh, look at it at your leisure. Uh, or if someone else uh, spread the word, people that couldn't attend, let them know, hey, it's going to be recorded. They can go back and look at this as well and whatnot. Uh, let me see. This These plan amendments are being, uh, they're tentatively scheduled to appear, go before the Metro Planning Commission on May 25th. So at the end of this month is when these cases will be heard. And before then, if you have any questions or concerns or just whatever the case may be, uh, feel free to reach out and call me uh, or email me. Let me share my screen once again and put my information up here so you guys, everybody can see. Okay, so I'm really just not sharing here. Anywho, let me, uh, it's not, not able to share here for some reason, but my email is Corey, C-O-R-Y dot Clark, C-L-A-R-K at Nashville.gov. Uh, again, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to drop me an email or whatnot, or my phone number, let me give that to you as well. It is 615-862-7155. And uh, I want to thank everyone for, co for coming out tonight, uh, being a part of this community meeting. And uh, Council Member Toome, do you have any uh, closing remarks? Just also want to thank the folks that got on, on the call. Uh, once the YouTube video is up, I'll make sure I post the link on my social media so that other folks can see it. And I'll also put it in my um, next newsletter that's going to come out uh, the week of the 22nd, which is the same week as the, the meeting before the planning commission. All right. And one last time, are there any more questions before I close it out? All right, going once, going twice, I don't see any. So everyone have a good evening. And once again, thank you for coming out and uh, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Corey. Bye-bye.